Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and you know what this video is about. It's time to talk about Fab Fabriz Fabrizio? Is it Fabrizio? And Terry? Could be on Terry. Let's just call him Fabriz Antares. How about that? Fabriz is a longtime pro player. Um, he's done really well at a lot of Grand Prix and all kinds of different events. And that's actually an understatement. He came in first place in Barcelona, first place Grand Prix Mexico City, first place Grand Prix London, first place Manchester, first place Warsaw. That's first place. That's not even second place. Of course, he had a couple, you know, seventh place, second place, third place, fourth place, fifth place, fifth place. I mean, I'm just looking through his history. This guy wins constantly. And I think if you've uh, watched my channel long enough, you know exactly what I think about people who just consistently win. Like, they never get mana screwed. They never go up against an opponent that just sort of gets lucky. They just always seem to win. Hmm, isn't that suspicious? It's because they're cheating, okay, people? Grow up and wake up. A huge portion of these alleged pros are cheating. Wizards pretended to clean up the whole, you know, cheating scene because it was a complete joke back in the day. It was like pirates playing against each other. People knocking over decks and life dice right in front of the judge. It was just a joke back then. Now they pretended everything's just sunshine and rainbows when really, in reality, the people are just better at cheating. There is no way within probability that somebody is outplaying people that much. That can't happen. You can play as well as you want, and if you don't pull the right cards, which is going to happen 10 to 15% of the time, then you just lost that tournament. You can't just go to every tournament in top eight. It doesn't work like that. So you'll never guess which side of the debate I'm on about this guy, because, you know, naturally he claims he did nothing wrong. Now, he does have a legitimate excuse, sort of. And we'll never know if he if he's just outright lying or if he was accidentally cheating, but he absolutely was cheating. I mean, even he admits that. What he was doing was giving him an unfair advantage. Well, probability states that he's been doing it since 2012. So for the last uh, four years, he's just been accidentally winning Grand Prix by accidentally cheating. Boy, that is just, that is a shame. I'm sure he's real sore, you guys. So now that you know my take on it, let's see what Wizards had to say. Uh, not much. The head judge at the Manchester Grand Prix that is, uh, I believe, going on right now decided to disqualify him after investigating what he thought was a little bit suspicious. By the way, the head judge's name is Alfonso Bueno, which is the coolest name ever. It sounds like both a clothing line and Ebenezer Good's Hispanic cousin. So kudos to Alfonso for uh, not only having an awesome name, but also catching this guy with no tips from players, nothing. He just outright caught him, from what I understand. So anyway, it says head judge Alfonso Bueno explained uh, Fabrizio Antares, which I'm going to call him for the rest of the video, uh, has been disqualified from the Grand Prix Manchester 2016 for deck manipulation. He, quote, repeatedly used a shuffling technique which made his deck have a beneficial distribution of lands and spells. Based on our investigation, we came to the belief that Fabriz Antares was doing this on purpose to gain an unfair advantage in gameplay. So they were 100% certain that he didn't just need a warning, he didn't need a reminder that he needs to shuffle more. They were just like, no, this guy's doing it on purpose. And this is the head judge. Now that's the end of the wizard statement, so I assume Alfonso went over and just like took his deck threw it into the crowd, kicked the table over, tackled him in his chair, handcuffed it to him, pepper sprayed him in the face. Okay, he probably just walked up to him and said, hey, you're disqualified. We saw you cheating. Vas al diablo, amigo. Now, Wizards didn't want to say what he was doing, I assume because then people would copy him, like as if people don't know how to cheat. I mean, come on. I personally am an expert card magician. If I wanted to cheat, I would find ways to do it. I mean, you could look up at, uh, on the internet how to cheat at like any kind of card game. I mean, come on, the knowledge is out there. But luckily, Febreze went on his Facebook page and decided to explain what he was doing. Wasn't that nice of him? He said, I got disqualified from GP Manchester. I was sorting lands between games while checking my main deck configuration and not shuffling properly or even at all afterwards. Now, see, that kind of makes sense. Um... You know, you want to make sure that you don't have sideboard cards in your main deck, or that's at the very least a game loss if they catch you. And honestly, the announcers would catch you, let alone the judges. Now, what he said next was rather weird. He said, I sort lands because I'm a control freak, and it just hurts my sight, I assume he meant to type, to see them together, but it creates a big advantage if I don't shuffle properly afterwards. Well, w according to other, you know, accounts, he wasn't sorting the lands. He was just looking through his deck to make sure there's not a giant mana cluster, and if there was, he'd break it up. And who doesn't do that? 
me because I know how shuffling works and I know how to shuffle my deck randomly because uh, if you think about it in general, the more random your deck is, if you did the math and designed the deck properly on a spreadsheet and looked at the ratios and looked at the card counts, the more random the card arrangement is, the more consistently it will perform. If you improperly shuffle and they're not in a random pattern, you're probably going to lose the game because of it. You could start getting really weird draws that are not representative of your deck, like the same card over and over or an unnatural amount of lands, either high or low. And that's where this falls apart. This is where I don't believe him. If you're looking through your deck and you see a giant clump of lands, um, yeah, separate them. I mean, if you're literally between rounds, if you're not like sitting there with your opponent right there. But if you are shuffling and you catch wind of a whole bunch of uh, lands in a row, don't sit there and, you know, move them apart because just be confident that your shuffling will make it random enough. So just keep shuffling, basically. Deal them into piles, chop shuffle, thick shuffle, riff shuffle, mix it up. You know, do whatever you got to do to mix it up. Do not manually move the cards. Here is why I think the head judge had a problem with this. If you're about to shuffle for a game and you know that there might be a giant mana, you know, pocket of like four or five lands in a row, or you do know because you saw them, and so you split them up in your deck then shuffle, that's saying that what you just did is going to survive the shuffle randomization. So however you're about to shuffle, the randomness that you just put into the deck, the nice little distribution, will be preserved. If you truly believe that your shuffle is random, and you do have to shuffle randomly, that is an actual rule, you have to shuffle in a manner that randomizes the cards, then you have to believe that that mana pocket will be gone because you're shuffling in a manner that randomizes the cards. So there's no need to move them because you're about to re-randomize the cards completely again. You know, So whether there's a mana pocket or if you spread them out, it's the same result. Now, if you're purposely shuffling like an exact 50-50 riff shuffle like three times and that's it, which I believe three is the minimum times you have to shuffle your deck, then you do know that that mana spacing is going to be preserved because you're doing a 50-50 shuffle. You might as well not even be shuffling your cards at all. And it sounds like that's what he did. Because his next statement seems a bit odd. I'll just read his whole statement so you know what he said. I've been reading the reaction from people and would like to reply some general questions and points in common. He says, I never look through my deck before game one because there is nothing to check. So he was doing this, like, in between games, like game two and game three of the round. How the hell did this guy go four years without his opponent catching him? I would spot it instantly and call over a judge. If you start picking apart individual cards and looking at your cards while shuffling them right before game two, I'm going to catch you every single time. What the hell is wrong with these pros? Anyway, he goes on to say, after sideboarding, I normally check if the configuration is the optimal one for the match. Make sure that there are not any undesired cards. So you put your sideboard in and then look through your whole deck, I guess. I mean, that's unnecessary. I would just look at the cards I pulled, have my deck list memorized. I mean, I wouldn't look through the whole deck. I think he's lying there, too. Anyway, then he says, while I'm looking through, I am also checking and uh, moving my lands to separate them. So if there's a clump, he separates them. Uh, once I am done looking, I will carry on shuffling. Sometimes, maybe 0.1% of the time, maybe 1%, maybe 10%, I don't know the right number, I can just remember and recognize it had happened. So he knew he wasn't shuffling properly after examining his deck. Then he goes on to say, I will be concerned of the time left in the round, so yeah, I mean, that's distracting, and out of the rush for presenting my deck, I would not shuffle properly or won't even shuffle at all after looking through it. What is wrong with this guy's opponents? Seriously. He maybe shuffles a couple times, whatever, decides to sideboard some cards out, picks up his deck, looks at the deck, moves the lands apart, sets it down and tells you to cut it. And nobody caught that. I don't care if it's a Grand Prix, the Top 8, or Friday Night Magic, or Kitchen Table Magic. When my opponent is shuffling, or not shuffling, I am at their house hiding inside their refrigerator with a telescope, watching their every move to make sure that they're not pulling some shuffle shenanigans, which is the number one way to cheat. Except at my old local gaming store where people would put six of a card in the deck. But aside from regional cheating methods, that is the number one way to cheat, is, is cheap, fake shuffling. Just ask any magician anywhere. But no, it took the head judge to catch him doing this, and multiple times, and what he deemed to be on purpose, like knowingly. 
unbelievable. There's no way this guy isn't guilty. There's no way he was doing it on accident. I do not believe it. And the evidence is that he won just about every damn Grand Prix there was. All in case you're not pissed off enough already, um, he goes on to say, My head is somewhere else when this happens. I am thinking how to play my next game, or maybe I am just thinking what to eat for dinner. Both of which you wouldn't want to do if you're a pro Magic player in the top 8 against a hard opponent. He says, I am just not thinking about my deck having an ideal balance of lands and spells. Which... He is. I don't know why he even said that. That's like why he just said it like two sentences ago. Like why he was splitting them apart. Oh my god. Today, after a judge noticed this and I was called for investigation and got everything explained, I understood the unfair advantage I was getting from doing this. I completely agree this is not right to do, and I will put attention now on Wait boy, this guy is terrible at sentences. I will put attention now on and make sure it doesn't happen again. I can't prove it wasn't unintentional, and I know it looks bad enough, so I don't blame anyone who doesn't believe me. Good, because I don't believe you. You've obviously been doing this for years. Otherwise, how would you have such an unnatural advantage to win every freaking GP ever? I really hope Wizards takes away all of his prize money, like sues him for the prize money. They've done something sort of similar in the past when they caught really, really bad cheaters. Although not retroactive to this extent, but this guy has years of history obviously cheating. I mean, I would go back and watch the footage, but that's Wizards' job if they choose to do it. Who knows? They never do. It'll probably just be Reddit again, watching a bunch of videos and then bringing it to the attention of Wizards. Go get them, Reddit! Now, of course, reading a bunch of responses on Reddit, there have been rumors about this guy cheating forever, probably because he kept finishing first place like an unnatural amount of times. And from what people are saying, he had really nice opening hands an unnatural amount of the time. So people are just like, I don't know how he's cheating, but he's cheating. This does not match with probability. Nobody has a four-year lucky spree. Now, he earned three automatic buys, which I, you know what I think of that system already. Give all these professionals, or as I like to call them, cheaters, three free wins so that somebody like me doesn't, you know, come in the first round and just destroy them with a rogue deck. You know, God forbid that happens. Or God forbid they get caught cheating, but he got caught in round four. So the head judge was watching him specifically on his very first game. So, you know, let that one roll around for a second. Rumor is somebody said, hey, I think this is what he's doing. The judge was super watching him super close and then immediately just said, nope, nope, you're doing that. You're cheating. And he said multiple times. So he didn't even get out of round four. So he he did it every time he shuffled, basically. Or at least, like, before the start of a game, I should say. I don't think it was a coincidence that the head judge was standing right there to see it. And was evidently going out of his way to look for it. So in summary, everybody's been suspecting Febreze of cheating this entire time. Everybody wants, like, a, a X amount. Like, it used to, it actually used to be three. It used to be a rule. I don't think it is anymore that you had to shuffle your deck at least three times. Now it's some vague crap about you just have to sufficiently randomize it without assistance. But keep in mind the golden rule. If you don't like the way your opponent shuffled, feel free to shuffle their deck for them. You are more than welcome to do that, and certain pros will say they do it every round, every time, every game, every opponent, no matter what. If they start complaining about you doing that or say, oh my gosh, I'm going to call the judge over because you're shuffling in a manner that's wearing out my cards and dealing damage, then there's a 100% chance that they're cheating and they're super, super mad that you're shuffling their stack deck, basically. Call over a judge for them and say, hey, this guy's complaining about the fact that I'm shuffling his deck at all as carefully as I possibly can. I think he's cheating. Watch him the entire rest of the tournament. They will be inside of his refrigerator at his house with a telescope. A telescope that can see through refrigerators. Anyway, his explanation of, oh, I, my fingers are enchanted. They have a mind of their own. I had no idea what I was doing. I mean, I knew I was doing it, but I had no idea I was doing it. You know, that's rock solid logic. He's basically just trying to wriggle his way out of it and not get a lifetime ban. I think he obviously should get a lifetime ban and they should sue him for the prize money. So hopefully we never have to see this guy again. Um, otherwise... I mean, if he shows up the next GP, people are just going to beat the living crap out of him, honestly. People are so sick of taking all the time and all the money to go to these Grand Prix and then not have a chance in hell. One, because guys like this get three free buys, and two, because most of them are cheating. Now, I'm not saying every single pro is cheating, but you can look at the math and say there's no way that this one person won this much without cheating. There's no way. You know, I have a proposition. Instead of uh, mandatory minimum shuffling, because honestly, that wouldn't even stop me if I wanted to cheat. I could fake shuffle a hundred times and still have the same cards on top of my deck, trust me. Could probably control the cut too. 
they need to have casino level anti cheat people just walking around. They're not even judges. They don't need to learn the rules. They're just really good vision people who have the day off from their job working at a casino, basically. But since they will never do that, even if the people were volunteers, oh well. Hopefully at least this guy has to give all $42,900 back. That is his total winnings for cheating and cheating and cheating other people out of their chance of winning the tournaments. So with the quality software breaking down all the delays, all the bad things I've heard about Star City Games and the way they run their tournaments, all the pros getting caught cheating, and the automatic buy system, plus the free appearance fee whether they win or lose, I would just strongly recommend what I've said in the last couple videos. Don't even bother going to a Grand Prix. It's not worth it. Because of one reason or another, fair or not, cheating or otherwise, you're going to lose. Or you're going to run into somebody like Chris Anderson. Or both, and it'll probably be cheating. Now, if you do want a perfectly fair way to uh, win a whole bunch of awesome glittering prizes by playing MTG, I am just barely short of 10,000 subscribers. As soon as I hit it, I will release the details on my X-Mage tournament that I'm going to hold. It's really, really simple, and it's provably fair, because I'm going to stream it on Twitch. And the prizes will be randomly generated with a random number generator. Trust me, I've got it all down. If you want to get prepared, though, install X-Mage on your computer, obviously. Get some standard tags built that you think could beat me, and have either an established channel, like not just a Google account, but you have to actually create a channel, which you don't have to actually upload a video, you just have to hit like the create channel button and name it, like that's it, or have a Twitter account, one or the other, or both. I just have to have a way to get your shipping address without you typing it in the general chat if you win one of the prizes. So get on that, and I'll see you guys next video, which is probably going to be about how to catch people cheating, because I've wanted to make that series forever.